história da cirurgia vascular. Dr. Parodi, por favor. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I'm going to talk about a topic that is, I, I consider that is very useful for the vascular surgeon. I've been using this for more than 30 years, and, uh, and we had uh, very, very good results in selected patients. Prostaglandins were described in 1930 by Kulchow. The name was coined by Von Oller in 1934 because he mistook this substance for a secretory product of the prostate. The first report of uh, prostaglandin used in peripheral vascular disease appeared in 1973. In clinical use, we have now prostaglandin E1 and the chemical stable prostacycline Iloprost. Doesn't advance this? Oh, okay. Prostaglandins are very important vasodilators, prevent migration and activation of leukocytes, activation of complement and platelet aggregation, reverses the aggregation of platelets and leukocytes, and increases the formability of red blood cells. Also promotes fibrinolysis. Okay. And also promotes angiogenesis, as we, as we have seen with many patients. Also inhibits proliferative and mitotic activity of vascular smooth muscle cells. Also has not well defined cytoprotection and also stabilization of endothelial membrane. The exact mechanism of uh, the beneficial effects is not completely understood yet. The prostaglandin is transported in the bloodstream bounded to albumin and is metabolized in the lung 70 to 90 percent when given IV. The metabolites are eliminated by the kidneys. What are the problems with prostaglandin? Very few problems. In more than 30 years, we didn't have any complication with the use of prostaglandin. Only we can see is local pain when you do the injection, and sometimes we need anesthesia. Hypotension, if you give the drug in high doses, and edema. We published the first experience in 1995 in a book of Jimmy Yao in Chicago. The application of prostaglandin E1, Burgess disease, atheroembolism, and also associated with autologous bone marrow mononuclear cell implantation. The first patient we treated was a patient with Burgess disease many years ago, and the patient was an attorney. And uh, he, the patient had surgery for critical limb ischemia twice before he came to us. And we did an extensive operation that failed because of the condition of the veins. So this attorney the following day told us, I am an attorney, I came here, I paid my bills, and I came with an ulcer, now I have the ulcer, and in addition I have incisions all over, so you're gonna, you're gonna hear from me in the near future. So I went to the, uh, not internet, we didn't have internet, to the library and we found an article in German of prostaglandin E1 use intraarterially in one patient for Berger's disease. So we tried that treatment and that was very, very successful. And the patient healed the ulcer and became very happy. In a few days we had a patient with a trash foot and we started to use the prostaglandin E1 with atheroembolism. Uh, atheroembolism is a great indication for prostaglandin, probably atheroembolism and Berger's disease are the two main indications. We use intraarterial prostaglandin, but you can use also intravenous prostaglandin. Atheroembolism can be spontaneous or iatrogenic. We are seeing more and more iatrogenic uh, atheroembolism for the extensive use of endovascular treatment. They can affect the visceral uh, kidneys, liver, heart, gastrointestinal tract, the nervous system, the skin, subcutaneous tissue, and muscles.
The incidence after coronary angiogram is 30% in autopsies. So, uh, as I said, with ateroembolism, you see this often. We can say very clearly that embolization is universal after endovascular instrumentation. Uh, Peter Bell used the transcranial Doppler in the femoral artery when he was performing EVAR stu studies. We were using transcranial Doppler for uh, when we use uh, uh, carotid stenting. Obviously, uh, they are very, we should start saying it's universal, but obviously the consequence will depend, will depend on the size of the, the emboli and the number. What are the symptoms? Pain, libido reticularis, gangrene, CPK elevation, eosinophilia, hypertension, renal insufficiency, intestinal ischemia, paraplegia, and multi-organ failure. Something wrong with this, it doesn't advance. The triad of libido reticularis, acute renal failure, and eosinophilia is, is very crucial to make the diagnosis in many patients. Can you fix this, please? This was the first patient we treated with ateroembolism. A few days after treating the first patient with prostaglandin, after having uh, the diagnosis of Berger's disease, we received this patient who had an open AAA resection, and apparently with the retractors, they squeezed the aneurysm, and this patient had a massive mi microembolization. This patient had pulses, peripheral pulses, but had excruciating pain and the libido reticularis you can see and the color of the, of the foot. Uh, this patient was treated very successfully with four injections, intraterial injection of prostaglandin in, 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 within a week. What is the pathophysiology? There is a migration and activation of leukocytes and complement this is a platelet aggregation, platelet aggregation and release of thromboxan at 5-HT that promote intravascular coagulation. And afterwards, we see inflammatory responses in all of them. What is the treatment? Obviously, you need to, to uh, make the diagnosis of the source of embolization. And there were several treatments in the past, heparin, coumadin, steroids, statins, aspirin, plavix, prostaglandin E1. Our choice is prostaglandin and statins. This was the initial experience. You can see spontaneous embolization in aneurysms, patient who come with a small aneurysm and a thermoembolism, following resection, following EVAR, and have sustained iliac stenting and popliteal aneurysm, and also in thoracic outlet syndrome. This was a very critical patient we received in 1991, 67. The patient was ready to have a bilateral leg amputation, and we studied the patient, and this patient had a small AAA, and we decided to treat this patient with an endolumina treatment with the initial design with a balloon expandable stent and, and a graft. And also we treated this patient with prostaglandin E1. This patient survived nine years and the autopsy showed a patent aorta and uh, the kidneys were affected because the atheroembolism also involved the kidneys. You know, I cannot advance this. Uh, this patient was treated for four days. Can you advance the next, please? And this is the picture. So this patient was convinced that he needed bilateral amputation because he had mus muscle infarcts in the calf and also this picture in the skin. And this after the treatment, this is a month after the treatment, and, and the patient survived and also saved both the lower extremities. Next, please. This is what we see often when we receive a patient with atheroembolism, the shaggy aura. This should be treated uh, with a very specific treatment because you can cause a catastrophe if you, you start instrumenting inside this aura. 
And this is a picture of atheroembolism we see next. Of the first uh, group of patients, we had two patients dying after massive microembolization following EVAR because intestinal ischemia. And 14 patients recovered completely with minimal tissue loss. So the initial experience was very encouraging. Next, please. In the last years, we were working at Barnes Hospital in St. Louis and Jackson Memorial in, in Miami, and also we treated uh, a, an important group of patients uh, with several causes of the atheroembolism, and the results were completely positive in 90% 90, in 90 of the patients. Next, please. We use intrauterial prostaglandin with a dose of between 200 and 1,500 micrograms. 13 patients needed two treatments, and two patients needed uh, the third treatment. This is the picture of the angiogram you see uh, in patients with atheroembolism of the upper extremities. And this patient was treated, we, we treated eight patients with uh, upper extremity ischemia. This patient had a very, very uh, marked ischemia with pain. And this patient was treated percutaneously from the femoral artery with a catheter in the subclavian artery and then the brachial artery. And, and the patient recovered in less than 24 hours and the pain disappeared completely. Upper extremities is, is, a, is a good place to treat uh, with prostaglandin. Next, please. In, in Japan, they are as associating prostaglandin with, uh, uh, with for angiogenesis induced by autologous bone marrow cells. The first uh, publication, as I said, was done in 1973 in The Lancet. There are other publications with very positive results. We started six months ago a prospective randomized study with five hospitals with atheroembolism. This is going to take probably two years to have enough number of patients. Next, please. Next. And uh, this is a picture. We had this patient in the hospital for a month. Uh, one of the residents came and said, you know, this patient has six toes. And the nurse came and said, I know that prostaglandin is good, but I didn't know that was so good. Now this patient has an extra toe to replace the gangrenous toe. Next, please. Conclusion, prostaglandin E1 has been effective to treat selective cases of atheroembolism and Burgers disease. Comparison with historical control cases showed big differences. The treatment is safe. No complications were recorded in more than 60 patients treated an association between autologous bone marrow, mononuclear cell implantation, and prostaglandin is under investigation. Thank you very much.